Uh, the vast majority of that checkout falls to our robotics team. Uh, there's a small portion that comes to the EVA team, which is to check out uh, the three ready-to-latch indicators, um, which is basically just depressing some paddles to make sure that the software recognizes uh, when the hardware is in position and ready to be latched in place. Uh, with that, I think we're ready for the first video of EVA-1. We start out uh, on EVA-1 with the JPM in the payload bay. EV-1, Mike Fossum, has moved down to the port side of Node 2, where he'll be working with the shuttle robotic arm operator uh, to coordinate a task to remove two launch restraint straps from the elbow camera of the arm. Uh, these straps were flown in place to keep the elbow camera from vibrating during launch and perhaps impacting the radiators on the payload bay doors uh, or the gem module itself. After the straps are removed, they'll move the arm away and perform a quick pan and tilt check to make sure that the camera is able to rotate. When Mike is done with this task, he'll move over uh, on the port side of node 2 to the active common berthing mechanism, or ACBM. This is the port where uh, the JPM will be berthed later on this flight day. He will inspect the surfaces and make sure everything looks like it's uh, supposed to, and then he'll also open up a window cover that's in the center of this view. Uh, it's not shown here in the video, but the porthole that you see in the middle is what would be covered by that window cover. He'll open that up so the IV crew or the crew inside the vehicle can set up a camera that will aid in the berthing of the um, JPM to this port. He'll then move down to the Nader um, ACBM and repeat that same operation on this window cover. And this is the port where the MPLM uh, logistics module will be uh, mated during the ULF-2 flight. When he's completed that task, he will translate up to the front face of the truss where he will go on to the mobile transporter to complete the ready-to-latch checkout that we uh, talked about earlier. And from this location, he'll also, when he has completed and the uh, boom has been released from ISS, which is what EV2 is working on currently, uh, he will work from this position to help release the keep alive umbilical from the boom. So here's the ready-to-latch indicators. So while EV-1, Mike Fossum, is completing all of those tasks, Ron Guerin will be working on the starboard truss to prepare the boom to be uh, handed off to the station arm, which will then take it and hand it off to the shuttle arm. His first task is this keep alive umbilical has several Velcro straps that he will release, and that will allow the cable to have some slack so that the station arm can uh, move the boom around a little bit uh, while we're releasing it from the station, um, and then we can keep it powered for as long as possible so that our uh, power down time for the sensors is minimized. The second task that uh, Ron Guerin will be performing is to translate to the midpoint of the boom, and he will be working on this first of two um, OSEs, or orbital support equipments. These are the stanchions that are mounting uh, the boom to ISS. He releases the first one, and when he is complete with that, he will give the station arm operator a go to complete their uh, rigidization of the SSRMS, or station arm, uh, to the boom. When he is complete with that, he will translate down to the uh, outboard side of the boom. And out here, he's got two tasks to complete. The first one is going to be to remove a bag, which we'll uh, show shortly here, which was installed over the sensor package area by STS-123. This uh, protective cover was put in place to help uh, protect the sensor packages thermally and also from orbital debris during its stay on orbit. The next task that he'll be completing is to release the uh, second of the two orbital support equipment structures here. And once he's released this, the boom will be completely under the control of the station arm and uh, released from the truss. At that point, uh, both crew members will meet back up at the inboard side of the boom. EV-1 will climb out onto the boom to release uh, the keep alive umbilical. So there's some uh, choreography here with the ground team to uh, put the inhibits in place and we'll start our thermal clock as soon as those inhibits are in place. And EVA, EV-1 again will release uh, what is called the CAD or Keep Alive Umbilical Attach Device, which is the part that actually structurally attaches the, the umbilical to the boom. He will hand off that uh, piece of equipment along with the cable to EV-2. EV-2 is going to uh, finish cleaning up that work site and stowing the cable and the, and the CAD. Well, EV-1 at that time will move off to the payload bay to begin uh, preparing the JPM uh, for removal. The last part of the cleanup for EV-2 is to go back and revisit both of these orbital support equipment structures. There are, uh, are several rotational joints on each that he will lock out to their most rigid uh, position in order for it to be in a good configuration for its stay on orbit. When he's complete with that, Ron Guerin will move to the airlock and drop off a bag full of some uh, tools that he was using for the, the OBSS release, and then he will translate down to the payload bay to meet up with uh, EV-1 Mike Fossum. 
Both crew members will translate down the port sill of the payload bay. And they have two main tasks to complete in the aft portion of the payload bay. The first one is completed by Mike Fossum, which is to remove some heater cables uh, called LTA cables, and these power the shell heaters for the module while it's in the payload bay. He'll remove those cables and then stow them on a stanchion on the uh, sill of the vehicle. And then both crew members will work on remo removing uh, eight contamination covers from the passive common berthing mechanism, or PCBM. This is the surface that will mate uh, the JPM to node two. Each of these covers will be removed by Mike Fossum and handed up to Ron Guerin, who will then stow them in a bag. And once he has received all of those covers and packaged the bag, he will translate back down the port sill with that bag to the airlock to stow it. Uh, EV-1 will also translate back down the port sill, but on his uh, way out of the payload bay, he will stop off on the uh, forward side of the payload bay on the uh, JPM, and he will be working on one of two window shutters. There are three bolts that lock, uh, that lock the window shutter in place for launch uh, for each of the window shutters. He will work on what will be the forward window shutter once this is installed on, on station. Uh, the aft one, which is just immediately to the right of that one, is partially obstructed by the GEM RMS end effector, so we will save that one uh, for EVA-3 when the GEM RMS has been partially deployed. The last task for EVA-1 is uh, the tasks out on the starboard Sarge. Both crew members will be out here. Uh, they will be working in parallel on different tasks. EV-2 will be working on the trundle bearing assembly, while EV-1 Mike Fossum works on uh, an inspection of the data may surface and uh, some cleaning DTO activities. So here is the trundle bearing assembly that Ron Guerin is installing. It has two parts. There's a, a mount assembly that attaches to the inboard ring, and then there's a bearing assembly that attaches to the mount and then clamps three roller bearings around the outboard ring. This uh, next picture will show that. And this basically allows the outboard ring to rotate relative to the inboard ring. There are 12 of these total installed on the Sarge. This flashing point is actually the place where the internal bearing is being installed, and then they will uh, reinstall the protective cover on the Sarge. So while Ryan is completing that, Mike will be uh, removing two protective covers from the Sarge uh, to give himself enough race ring to work with for all of the DTO objectives or the detailed test objective for the cleaning DTO. This is the data may surface, which is what he'll do first. This is the area of interest that was investigated on the last flight uh, with a crew equipment hook, which is a fairly rounded uh, piece of hardware. Uh, we will revisit this spot with um, a little sharper tools to be able to try to get a little bit better tactile feedback. So here we have uh, crew member.